Hi, my name is Lacey Landis, and my birth year is 1988. I chose the topic that I chose because I feel like most people are automatically going to assume that everything is positive in the computer history. And I think it's just a natural reaction for that. Therefore, I wanted to choose something different, and I wanted to choose a negative impact on our computer history. Um, there's so many great things that have happened in our computer history, but there's also a lot of um, bad things that have happened. And unfortunately, I think it's just grown and grown, and we haven't really taken the time to try to fix these things. And I think if we can make ourselves more aware of the things that have occurred, we can stop and think about how we can try to fix those things or prevent those things from reoccurring in the future. Um, we can erase the um, history from our computer history, but like I said, there's many things that we can do to try to prevent them from happening again. I chose to talk about the worm, um, and I'm going to give you a definition of the worm, so that way you have a better understanding of the situation that I am discussing here. A worm is a self-replicating virus that hides itself on computer hard drives and spreads itself to other computers on its network. Um, unfortunately, a virus, a worm like that, it just, it will completely crash a computer. Um, we see that many times today. Uh, this worm was created on November 2nd by a guy named Robert Tappan Morris. Um, he sent the worm out, and it was known as the Morris Worm. Robert Tappan Morris was a graduate of Harvard and Cornell, and he used the MIT system to um, try to disguise himself um, from being known as a Cornell student. He didn't want people to know that he was he was a student there at the time, and. Um, He only meant for this to be sent out once. Unfortunately, he set it to where it would be sent out seven times. And when it did that, it had a bigger impact um, than probably what it would have had if it was only sent out once. Um, and another issue that was made was he put it in writing. And when you put something like that in writing, it's it's easier to prove um, when some when you are prosecuted, um, you have your name on it, and that's basically what he did. Um, the worm was um, replicating itself a lot faster than what he intended, and it started flooding hard drives and. It was causing extensive damage to um, many, many computers. Um, the cost in repairing or uh, removing the worm from the computer could range anywhere from $200 up to $53,000. You know, when you start talking that kind of money, that's, I mean, that's a lot of money and not everyone has that kind of money. Um, it took prosecutors eight months to indict him because there was um, an internal dispute over whether it might be impossible to prove charges. Um, I don't feel like it was impossible because he had it in writing. So therefore, that's, I mean, that's kind of your proof. Um, on July 26, 1986, Robert Tappan Morris was indicted for spreading the Internet's first worm, um, virus and it infected over 6,000 university research center and military computers. Um, Morris was given a sentence with a $10,000, $500 fine, um, 400 hours of community service, and a three year probation. Um, now he has. Um, really cleaned his act up, and um, he now currently teaches 
computer science at um, MIT, and he also has a personal website that um, features some of his programming work and also his research papers. Um, I think things that people do, um, they don't realize the impact that it will have. But I think once you turn your life around and um, like Morris has done, you really see that how you impacted that computer history and you really try to turn your life around and he really has. He's, um, he's really made himself into a good person. And I hope that we can all learn from that and um, all learn from his mistake.